if, yeah. if, if it's if it's if it's a disaster, it was Stephen's fault. If it's great, me and Matthew were massively involved in the organization. <laughs> Masterminds. Yeah. Welcome to Natural Strongman, the new YouTube channel covering everything to do with, of course, Natural Strongman. So we're joined today by the three brains behind the organization. So we've got Luke Davies, Matty Costello, and Stephen Wiley joining me. Thank you very much for joining us, lads. So the first Good question idea. I want to throw over to Luke, which is, what is Natural Strongman for everyone out there? It sounds like a simple question, but what actually is it? Um. In a nutshell, it's just a platform for natural athletes um, to complete compete on a level playing field. Um, as most people know, um, PED usage is pretty rife in the sport of strongman. It's well, it's encouraged at a lot of levels, um, but a lot of people don't want to take that step into um, using performance enhancing drugs for many reasons. It can be moral, personal, health reasons, whatever. Um, and we wanted to give them a platform to compete against other people on a level playing field, um, but also um, at like a high level. So previously, in my opinion, there's been natural shows, but it's also it's kind of been seen as like a second rate um, pathway, as in like it's, a, it's way lighter, it's easier, etc. We wanted to kind of um, push the boundaries for these natural athletes. So you'll see our shows, the weights are heavy, it's a, it's a wide variety of events to test people. And yeah, so it's just a platform for all these athletes to move forward. And it is something you do notice a lot for anybody who is out there watching, is you get the big top level shows of like World's Strongest Man. You get to see those. But shows like, for instance, the UK Naturals and Worlds coming up next week for the natural athletes, they don't get a lot of publicity. They don't get the the put um the shows on YouTube or live stream or anything like that. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, it's kind of the way a pathway in the past, in my opinion, is kind of all, it's almost been like a secret, as in like nobody knew about it, like knew when it was happening. There's very little footage. Uh, whereas we want to change that. We've been like promoting it as much as we can on like social media. Obviously, we had the live stream that you guys did for the UK finals um, over in Galway, which was excellent and was very well received, um, had good viewing numbers. Um, and that, yeah, that's important that we want to promote the athletes and like get them some attention basically for their achievements. Matty, how did, how did it all actually get started? So you, you three, you're different countries. Um, how did you actually get together and decide on creating this? Um, so like for, for me with starting Ireland, I think I had started a year before the UK had started or as far as Scotland and Wales. Um, I was listening to a podcast of, oh God, the guy that owns Spartan something gym, he coaches Donna Moore. Does anyone know his name? Oh, Jack Lovett. Jack Lovett. He was on a pod on the British Trend magazine, talking about natural strongman and this, that and the other. And he had done some of the shows in Hungary years ago, I think. Um, and I was just, I was going home that Saturday, listening to it, and I was thinking, thinking, thinking. I woke up Sunday morning and said to Aisha, we're starting a natural fed, it has to happen. Um, we had loads of lifters that were, they didn't, they wanted to do strongman, but they were doing powerlifting because there was tested competitions and they had nothing to do in Ireland. So it just kind of gave me the drive there to get something going. Um, and we ended up in, originally linking in with Way because that's the only thing that was there so that our competitors could qualify for something. Um Stephen then contacted me. I think it was after being over there at Worlds, and he had a couple of lifters over there. And we chit chatted back and forth, and it, it kind of just came to be. He, I think Stephen really got myself, Luke, and himself, Martin Lennox as well, into a group, and we all just kind of started chatting and getting something together. And we we created the the pathway to the UKNS finals, which was um, the three uh, English qualifiers, which included Wales as well, because the numbers weren't too big there, I suppose. Um, Martin and Stephen done the Scottish qualifiers, I done the Irish, and everybody kind of met in the middle in Edinburgh last year and it was really, really cool. Um, the standard was unbelievable. It was totally different to what we had seen before in the natural scene. Um, so I think that's I think that's kind of it. And then this is the second year of it, and we're looking at a world championship next weekend. This weekend, sorry, Jesus. This weekend, exactly. And and Stephen, going to you, what's what's planned for next year? So 
we've gone through the the last couple of years, and obviously that culminates next week in the worlds. But what's the plan for next year? Um, I'm not really sure. We we seem to kind of make it up as we go along, but it seems to be working so far. Um, obviously when we started, we just done something that was that was in the UK. Um, and then after last year, we were like, oh, we should make it even bigger again. We should do worlds try and get people in. We've already set up a record breakers for later in the year in a strongman total, um, which is um, log, deadlift and stone, so people can come hit PBs. It's good off-season comp, I believe. Um, and then we'll just go for that, I guess, until Worlds has been this weekend. You, we can't fully plan for next year. Like We can't c- decide how to make it bigger and better until we know what we did right and what we did wrong then. Um, so, yeah, it remains to be seen, but one thing I can guarantee is that it will be bigger and it will be better. Brilliant stuff. And, and Stephen, you got through that without one curse word. So that was amazing. We're all proud of you there. I've been practicing all day. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the comp locations, obviously, with this year, um, I've seen more of it as opposed to last year. But, Matt, you had uh, the UK Naturals down in Galway. Stephen, you had you're having the worlds up in Edinburgh. Will that all change for next year, location wise? Yeah, the plans to rotate it each year um, between between those countries, like the the UK based uh, UK and Ireland, I should say, um, <laughs> for the past few years at least. And then who knows? We, we might have internationals. We're looking at having qualifiers um, in Europe next year. Um, so, and if that goes well, then who knows what could happen the year after. But for now, the plan is to rotate them round. So we had the UK's finals in Scotland last year and the world finals in Scotland this year, which means next year I won't host anything. Um, the guys, Matty had the UK, so I believe the world is going to be in Ireland. Go away, Matty. Yep. Yep. Uh, next year, and Luke's going to host the UK's finals um, in England. And one thing we are doing next year as well, um, for the English side at least, rather than having qualifiers to UKs, uh, we're going to have a natural England strongest man and woman. So, whereas last year we just had like, an English qualifier for UKs, we had like a, a Midlands and a Northerns and a Southern. This year we're going to have a Eng- England strongest natural. So that's one change that's happening next year. And getting through to next week now, so we've got the Worlds, which is obviously a gigantic undertaking to actually put on, but it is, the build-up has been incredible. The athletes are so, so excited about this. But how much work has it actually taken to get it to this point? Um, Stephen's probably the best person to ask, answer that question because this <laughs> is his baby, the world's final. So. It's taken a lot. Um, it's taken a lot of work. It's taken a lot of sacrifice. It's taken a lot of planning and it's taking a lot of money as well um but it's got it's all going to be worth it i believe so strongly that this is going to be the next big thing and this is i i don't just believe it's the next big thing in strongman i believe that this is going to drive strongman up because as much as some people and even in, in, in as high as giants and stuff might be like oh that's that is not a real thing it's never been a real thing they are the people that benefit because when we drag more people into the sport that's more people that then subscribe to their youtube channels that buy their merchandise and whatever else so if everybody just works together and helps each other which has always been our plan although um it might have not always been perceived as that way and um, then i believe that this can really drive strongman to the next level to the point where athletes are getting paid to turn up at comps today whatever athletes can be full-time athletes i guess is what i'm trying to say and when you look at uh the natural competitions i think there's a um misperception that there is a big gap between what the natural athletes are doing and what the athletes that are on peds are doing for instance ben glasscock um was down at a uk naturals down in galway and a top top athlete and a lot of the athletes that are competing are at the top top level how how close do you see the natural athletes and the the athletes that are on peds like how big of a difference is there really like you got to look at chloe brennan winning official strongman europeans at under 73 Kyle Scott, who won UK's under 80s naturals, came third at Europeans as well. So, like, 
Um, who else? Uh, 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 Aneta podium as well in the yeah, Aneta, Aneta just... came third, and she like took points off Donna Moore on quite a few events at the Europe's. Like it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, she was against Donna and Sandra, so like. Yeah, but it wasn't. It wasn't as if she was a mile behind Donna, really. Like. Yeah. I mean, it was she was up right up there. Um, who else have we got? There's other people who remember Annabelle. Us. Annabelle Chapman, who's she won World's Ultimate Strongman, which was like probably the biggest women's comp in the world at the time when it happened a few years ago. She won that. She's a national athlete. Um, Gemma yes, Gemma as well. Yeah. yeah. Gemma yeah, Moore, yeah. like 600 pound deadlifter from Ireland. Aisha, another 600 pound deadlifter from Ireland. Um, on the female side of things, there's a lot of athletes out there who you'll see at Natural Worlds um, this weekend who will also be at OSG and they will not look out of place at OSG. Um, yeah, and they're, they're podium finishers essentially, you've all mentioned there, you know, at OSG yeah. comps. Um, Becca Wogan is another one who will be very competitive next time she goes to OSG, in my opinion. Um, yeah, there's people, in every, there's people in every single class. Um, Charlotte is another one. Um, in '64, who won UK and S, who came fourth row history, I think, Steve. Yep. Um, Europe's fourth row, Europe's. Um, yeah. So in every class, we've got some very, very good athletes uh, who can be competitive with the untested guys as well. And Stephen, going back to worlds, it's a two-day comp, and there is eight different events. How tough is this going to be for the athletes? <laughs> um. It, it's going to be really, really tough. I almost swore there. Um, the the thing I only discovered recently, or was I actually think multi day comps are harder than and single day comps, even with the same amount of events. Um, yeah. The adrenaline up and down and up and down, and then the recovery in between and stuff, I found really difficult. Um, I competed in a couple of six event comps that were done in three, three and a half hours earlier in the year. Felt absolutely fine. And then at OSG Europe, did two events per day. Um, and the next day, I was, didn't, I, I, yeah, I wasn't ready, let's say. Um, felt terrible, felt really beat up and whatever else. So the fact that these guys are doing four instead of two and then having to go in the next day. And it's heavy events, it's hard events. Um, to touch back on what we were saying about Make, making the events hard enough for the female side. The yoke is 20 kilos lighter than what they were doing at OSG Europe's, but double the distance. So it's a much harder yoke event. There's a lot of hard events there. So there'll be a, a lot of emphasis on recovery and who can recover between day one and day two, I think. And there's, I'm going to put pressure on you now to remember all of those eight events. What events do we actually have coming up? Axel Squat for reps. That's Matty's favourite, that one. Um, yoke 40 metres 20 and 20 um, overhead medley which is axle into dual hex dumbbells into barbell into log for reps max reps in the remaining of the 75 seconds um, and a hell medley which was Matty's idea for anybody um, <laughs> criticises me for that um, which is Two sandbags loaded from 15 metres and then a max distance Husafel sandbag carrying the remainder of the 90 seconds time. So that's a four in day one. Um, and then in day two, we have a deadlift ladder, um, sandbag throwing medley. We then have sandbag to shoulder ladder and then finishing off with fingers, fingers for max reps in 75 seconds. So some very easy uh, events there. Uh, and the athletes are going to hate you by the end of it. I yeah. told every, anybody who I coach who I was doing this comp who's been bitching to me about the events, I've just blamed Stephen for every single one. Of so. course, course, course. This I, I see the way this works. Luke, you blame Stephen. Stephen, you blame Matty. It's, <laughs> it's a good system you've got going here. Yeah. I only blamed Matty for one event, to be fair. Um, the rest were my fault. Yeah. The, the hell medley is probably the worst event everyone's getting out of. That, that's the good part, in my opinion, of like from a jockey point of view, way, way and serious is having not just one person at the top because, like, nobody can say, Oh, someone's picking this for their athletes or blah blah blah. It's like we all we vote on everything. Um, like, there's no one person making the decisions, even though obviously Steve is in charge of the natural finals. 
Um, so he did have like more say in the events, obviously, because he's picking his kit. If me and Matty had thought something was really, really stupid, we would have said, no, we're not doing that. Um, although Matty did almost say that about the squad, I think. Um, <laughs> but, you know what I mean? There's like, yeah. On there's more, no, one occasion. Yeah. <laughs> there's no one person making decisions. Um, so, like, touch wood, they'll just make everything more transparent and fairer for everybody. Because, like, Again, I feel like I don't want to feel like I'm bitching about Wea and other other organisations too much, but I know there's been quite a few British people who've gone over to Finland in the pre- previous years and have been unhappy about like um, decisions basically favouring the home athletes, and that's something I really don't want to happen at ours um, next week because obviously we've got people coming from Norway, um, Switzerland, um, all over Europe basically, so we want to make sure it's transparent and fair for everybody. And I think that's one of the things we've seen through all of the uh, natural tournament comps this year so far, that you, you are very much trying to make it a level playing field for everyone where it doesn't benefit certain athletes, like you have rules in place that everyone has to follow as opposed to, you know, different rules for different people. So that, I think that's very important to, to note as well. Yeah, definitely. That's like key for me. Um and that's why it's important with the UK is to rotate it around. So it's not just in Galway every year. It's not just in Edinburgh every year. Um, yeah, and like I think having something like Fingal's Fingers was great for that because nobody could fucking train it. Because no one, like, even Stephen's gym, he only got them, what, two weeks ago, Steve? Yeah, two weeks ago. Uh, a week and a half ago. They a week and a half ago. So it's not as if, like, all his gym members are going to have a massive advantage. Um, they're going to be there on the Friday for the people to play with it on the rules meeting, it's going to be one of those events that you just throw into the deep end with, which I, I like personally. And uh, Matty, jump with you there. I know you've got a couple of athletes coming across or going across from Ireland. Um, how are they feeling? How are they they set for this? Are you talking about athletes like coach or just Irish athletes, athletes in general? Athletes you coach, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I've, 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 we're down to four because we've had a couple of injuries, unfortunately, pulling out with them. Um, so like Gail McComaskey, I suppose she came second at UK. She won it the year before. She'll, she's, she, you know, she just lost the title this year. So I, I'd imagine she's going to be pretty aggressively going after it this year. So I think it's going to be a really good battle again um, in the Masters women with her uh, and uh, Wendy. Um, and then Liam McConville, who've been working with it's him and Kyle Scott. And uh, I think yeah. that's going to be a really good battle. And Liam's had a really, really good training cycle. Actually, I'm really excited to see how he gets on. Um I, I think he can do it. To be honest, with these set of events, they they kind of they, they uh they're pretty good for him. Um, the fact that it's really really heavy suits him, but like Kyle's a, f- I shouldn't have sweared sweared. <laughs> We're doing so well. I'm doing so well. Kyle's an absolute freak, and then you have Matthew Neese as well, who's really really good strong man. So that that under eighty category is stacked, but uh, I think I think they'll go quite well. They, they should be on the podiums anyway. That, that, that'll be a minimum ex- expectation for them. And then we have Tim O'Donnell and Sharon, both who've like, Tim was like pretty sick for a few weeks and Sharon tore her hamstring at UKNS. So I think for them, it maybe like just getting as high as they can off the table, maybe chasing top five and they'll be quite happy with that, being realistic about it. And Stephen, you've got, I know you've got quite a lot of athletes that are competing as well on the day. So how are they feeling? Getting nervous or are they all confident going into this? Yeah, it's always the same close to close to competition. It, it it can get a bit. There's a lot of meltdowns happening, but everybody's good. It always seems to come together on the day. I'm sure, that, like every all the guys are the same. They coach a lot of athletes and, and most of the women as well. So, um, we're all kind of in the same boat. Um, and it's amazing for the most part. It's always after it. You're always like that was worth every second and every meltdown, but. At this time, you're like, I'm never doing this again. Why did I do that? Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to name names, but I, I had a text off one of my, uh, the girls I coached this week, and she was like, please tell me I'm strong. <laughs> like okay. She was like, today was the worst session ever. And I was like, yeah, you can tell it's your last heavy session because you're having a meltdown. I was like, everything's going to be fine. I was like, we'll have a nice, easy week this week, and you'll be good to go. I think it's been a long, because obviously – it's the first year of Worlds, and we started the qualifiers like quite early. It's been a long season, I think, for a lot of people. We've basically been competing since January. 
um, all the way through. A lot of people also did Europe's always three, so it's like I think everyone's like waiting for a nice long rest now after the world final. A, a few DO weeks will do them no harm at all after this year. Yeah. Like it's been a long, heavy one as well. And the for next year, I know you don't have a, a the whole year planned or anything, but what's the first show? Or what's the first competition coming up for each of you? So, Luke, what's the first competition coming up in Natural Strongman next year over in uh, England? Um, it's going to be the English, um, England's Strongest Man and Woman, which will be early Feb- February. Um, so that's going to be the first thing in England. Um, we need to work. I think we are planning on having a Welsh um, this year as well. Um, so we need to, that'll be, a, I assume, around the similar time, early Feb. Um, I'm not sure about the guys. And Matty, how about yourself? What's the first one coming up? Uh, Natural Ireland as well, early Feb. Um, so men and women all the same weekend here in Galway. And Stephen, yes. similar enough? Yeah, similar. I think we're going to go last weekend in January, um, which then frees me up for the start of Feb, so I can go down and give with a hand or give whoever the hand in, in England and Wales as well. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have all the all the nationals, the Natty nationals, done by mid-February and then everybody will know everybody will get their invites and ready to go so that they they can get ready for UKs and stuff and plan the rest of their year out How important is that to get those competitions out of the way early Um, so like you say so athletes actually know and can plan out their year and plan out their training Yeah and for me as well it's important that we um, don't clash with like the untested side of things because a lot of people want to do both and is it, for me, anyway, it's important that we give the lifters as many options as possible. And um, so with the untested un- stuff tends to be like March, April ish for their qualifiers and stuff. So like someone like Kyle will do both. Um, do you know what I mean? And a lot of the girls will do both. Um, so yeah, it's important for me to get it. If we plant that was early, we're giving the other promoters time to work with us rather than against us and making people choose. Up next uh, next week, you'll all be there. Obviously, you have you have um, so much to do next weekend, but you've also got all got clients up there, so you'll be up there supporting and coaching them as well. Um, what are you guys looking forward to? Especially, is it just getting through the comp and finishing on Monday, or what's what are you looking forward to? Yeah, it's on Sunday night for me. Yeah, yeah, fact. Yeah. yeah, I think I always find that Steve will be the, the most stressed with this. I would yeah. imagine. Um, so for me and Luke, it's pretty easy. I'm going to land in Edinburgh Thursday and give Steve a hand whatever he needs. But stress is on him, really. <laughs> yeah, it's all Steve. If, yeah. if, if it's if it's if it's a disaster, it was Steve's fault. If it's great, me and Matty were massively involved in the organization. Ma- masterminds. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't really, I don't really care to be honest. I just want it to go over and done with it want to get beers on Sunday night hopefully I don't need to get beers with these two guys I can just go out and mow and and have fun go and have a pizza and a beer somewhere that's about it yeah, yeah. No, it'll be it'll be awesome I'm looking forward to the whole thing there's so much stuff of course of course it's stressful but I'm looking forward to seeing the international athletes coming over yep. here and going against the British athletes I'm looking forward to seeing that whole dynamic because we're in here making predictions and thinking about oh this person done this at UK they weren't far off they could snip that there could be people coming in here like when Matty was talking about the the I 80s saw- out there there's somebody coming for France do you know what I mean he could easily like we don't know much about him he could come in he could be amazing he could be the Natty Ben Donnan and then it's the same for the um I think it was the eighty two girls. I saw someone making predictions and nobody mentioned the um European girls who were coming over and they're all strong like Chrissia from Switzerland yeah. and Hannah Gosland from Norway, they're beasts. Yeah. And I'm like I'm I'm super excited to see that dynamic as well. The eighty two is a stack, the seventy three is a stack. We've got a few international athletes there as well. Um Jatis Paul, I think she came second to Rihanna not that long ago. Yeah, um, and she and she did well in Europe as well. Yeah, um, yeah. She was right up there on a few events with Chloe. Like she was part of the dynamic between Chloe, Jenny, and stuff. And Jata was right up there taking. I think she took an event win at Europe's sandbags. Yeah, on the sandbags, she won an event. At she won't win that. Festival. She won't win that at Worlds so, though, because Le French is there. So, Lou who? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, jo- I'm joking. Lou's great. Don't hate me. <laughs> 
Do you Thank find, you for... Steve, when, when a competition is, when you're running a comp, like you just like to get it started? When it starts, it just rolls. I, yeah. I always have the begin, come, that lead up that morning, the night before it, I hate it. And then when it yeah. starts, it's fine because it just rolls on. Yeah, I, I find myself going to the vet to the gym at like six AM as well in case I've forgotten anything. Yeah. And I never I never have. Everything's always ready, but I'm just like there early as like trying to Yeah, this one's a wee bit a wee bit different as well because it's at an external venue. So we've run like we've run a fitness comp outside before, but it's like you don't need a lot of weight and you need like one row or four rows or whatever. Whereas when you're like, oh, I need 80, 25 kilo calibrated plates and stuff like that. And then it's not in the gym. So a part of me is like, if I forget anything, it's not like, oh, I'll just go across and grab it. Um, it's not there. So, um, is your yeah. gym far away from the venue, Steve? Yeah. It's like half hour, is it? Half an hour drive. Yeah. So, I need, I, need to get it, I need to get it right. We, we were, the comp we ran last weekend in Galway, I forgot mats for the warm up room. We couldn't have them deadlift on a concrete floor. So I had to send someone off. It was only five minutes away. It was fine. Uh, yeah. Mats and back. yeah. Yeah. You're I've fucked. Forget anything. I've got, yeah. I've got it planned out at each event. It's like I've got exactly what plates are going to bar on the bar, like what type, whether it's calibrated or bumpers um, on, on each bar or whatever. And no, then, I, I, can't, I can't forget any of the calibrated plates. That is what you're saying. No, it's it's counted to a T. So if there's one missing, then we're fucked. <laughs> um, but also Don't we've got the warm up room. <laughs> yeah, we've got that like plan, so like the warm up area and stuff, and what we need in that. And then that was something because we had to, the, the the surface that it's on is um um it gets used by Scotland rugby and stuff, so they were quite precious about it. So we had to build platforms for um like the deadlift ladder, the overhead medley, and the squat. So. We built eight platforms and then we were like, fuck, we need stuff for the warm up area. So um so a lot of stuff that they that you take for granted when you're in the gym that we obviously can't take for granted um here. So I guess we'll find out in at the weekend what I forgot. Hopefully nothing important. Fingers crossed. So thanks very much for joining me today, guys. Um we will have a live stream, of course, for next weekend. It's on the new Natural Strongman YouTube channel. So I'm going to put a link in the description below. If you haven't subscribed already, click on over, get subscribed. Also check out the Natural Strongman Instagram channel because we will be posting the link to that live stream over the next few days. So thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you there on Saturday. I was going to say Friday, but we'll see you there on Saturday. And we only saw like three times, I think, so. Oh, uh, Matthew, all at the end. We just let loose at the end. The end. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then you said, oh, shit, I swore. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard not to. Hard not to. Yeah, oh, I, was be, I was going to be, if I just don't talk that much, then I won't swear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.